Rush by Gucci is an oddball. This is an oddball eau de parfum. It's supposedly inspired by the smell of poppers and late nights and discotheques and sweaty sex in the toilets. Um, all the good things in life. Not that I'd know anything about that, please. It's very synthetic, but not in a bad way necessarily. It's just that I can't identify um, anything in Rush as being something that you would encounter in nature. Hey, nature doesn't always have the last word. There's a lot of pleasant smells that can be created in the lab or with poppers, apparently. It has a, a soft, peachy, milky, powdery, woody quality. It's, um, in fact, I have a little vial of it here and I've sprayed some on, I'm just gonna freshen up. Oh, that's already a little bit too much for me. Um, it's strange. And uh, Rush kicks off with, uh, it's, oh, it's really fruity. I'm not a big fan of fruit. Um, this goes away, this dries down after a second, but um, it ha it's a little peachy and there's, there's an odd clash that kind of, uh, it's sweet and sour at the same time. And as it starts to mellow out, you start to pick up on a little bit of jasmine and uh, the peach kind of morphs into something that smells like pineapple to me. Now, pineapple isn't listed in the notes, but it definitely has that scratch, the back of your throat sweetness. It's a tartness and a sweetness. And, but with that odd milkiness, oh my God, Rush is twisting my melon. Uh, it was created by Michel Almerac, and he's the perfumer who did uh, some of my favorite perfumes. He did Burberry Classic, I love that fragrance. Uh, he did Grey Cabaret, go gorgeous, dry, woody rose, and he also did Gucci Pour Homme, which is great as well. And uh, this one is, uh, uh, interesting because it does, um, oh, once we get that strange, like, fruit attack burst out of the way, it does just kind of hover in a, in a, just a slinky little cloud around your skin. It's soft, um, it's, it's quite milky and doesn't really resemble anything else that you'd find on the perfume shelf, but I guess you'd say some distant cousins are... Um, Christian Dior Hypnotic Poison, which also has uh, that milky aspect. Um, milky, I don't know why this is the hand gesture for milky. Yeah! Uh, and it also reminds me a little bit of Terry Mugler Alien, which is that bonkers menthol, jasmine, and creaminess, which is just like, uh, if you put it in a glass, it would curdle like milk and lemon. And this rush has a little bit of a resemblance to that, but it's still marching to a different drummer. Uh, the interesting thing about this is that when you first put it on, um, and once that, that crazy uh, peachy candy thing dries down, uh, it gets, it's, it's soft, but, and it doesn't attack people's noses. It just kind of slinks in there. It just makes itself more, persistently there in people's consciousness. It's a little narcotic in that way. Oh, getting back to the poppers. And uh, it, but it, it does sneak up on you. It gets stronger and stronger as it goes along. So, uh, you know, one minute you're just like, oh, this is great. I'm just wearing this nice odd ball fragrance. And then before you know it, it's just kind of crept up on you and it's got brought you and sucked the world and the carpet and some dogs and some pigs and some people into this whole morass of rush. It's a little bit like The Blob, if you ever saw that movie. It's a lot, it's, it's in fact, it's a lot like The Blob, but with less screaming, if you're lucky. I'm Katie Puckrick, and I smell. Sure as number five, but you don't wear the